Hey everybody, Justice Good here, and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create a watercolor photo manipulation effect. This will take your photo and make it look like it was created with a bunch of splashes of watercolor and put it on a cool paper texture. So I'm going to take you all the way to step one, which starts at finding a paper texture. I found mine at the website Stock Exchange and I'll add a link to this one below, the specific one that I'm using but you can find paper textures like this all over stock websites and images it's just a scanned piece of real paper so I didn't create this in Photoshop and the second image you want to find is the photo of the person or thing that you're going to turn into a watercolor drawing so I have a photo of this guy in headphones that I also found at Stock Exchange. And I find all my images from that website, so I'll link all these below. Now you want to place it on your document and adjust the size and positioning to where you want it to be. Don't worry about the edges because we're going to take care of that by going to Image Adjustments and select Gradient Map. Now you want the gradient to be black to white, so if you click to edit the gradient, you want to make sure that these swatches are black to white and drag each of them in closer together and then you can adjust the positioning of them more to the left or to the right so that you get in the image the black part is the part that you want to stay and the white part is going to disappear when we add a blending mode. So pretty much you want to make sure that your image is still distinguishable like I can tell that this is a person's face and I didn't muddy it up too much. Dither also helps keep it smooth. Now set the blending mode of that to multiply and you can see it keeps everything that was black but it also has a little bit of an edge so go to layer layer mask reveal all. Grab your paintbrush tool and using a regular soft round brush paint black on the layer mask. That will make anything that you don't want to see disappear. So I got rid of that little edge there. But if you use an image that works well, you won't have to be doing too much touching up or re-editing. So remember to use images that you think will work well. The next thing you want to do is find an image of a watercolor splash. I also found this one at Stock Exchange and I'll link this below so you can use it too but you can use different ones if you find different ones open it in a separate document and go to edit define brush preset and Photoshop will automatically know that you only want to take the black out of that photo so now we have the transparent black watercolor brush as you can see that's what it looks like but we're going to use Photoshop's brush panel settings to give it a more sporadic and spread out look. So head over to Window Brush and this will open up the brush panel where you can check and uncheck certain things to change how the brush paints. So the first thing you want to check is Shape Dynamics and turn the size jitter all the way up to 100 percent. That gives us a variation in the size from large to small. You can also adjust the roundness jitter a small amount and the minimum roundness you can turn that down a tiny bit. Also check scattering and you can use both axes and turn it up to somewhere at about 400 percent. Also you can turn on wet edges which doesn't let you adjust it, it just adds the wet edge look which will help our watercolor and if you click brush tip shape you can adjust the size and spacing. So once you have something similar to this we can begin using this to create the watercolor effect on our image. So I'm going to create a new layer with shift command N and set this layer to multiply. Then I'm going to click the layer on top which should be your photo and go to layer create clipping mask and if you did that correctly everything should disappear but if you grab your paintbrush tool with your watercolor brush that you just made and start painting white 
on that new layer you made, you'll slowly see everything reappear, but with the watercolor texture because of the clipping masks that we made. So when you're painting this, make sure you're using multiple clicks because we turned wet edges on so it'll kind of overlap on top of each other and create darker and lighter spots. So each time I'm clicking, I'm letting go of the mouse and then clicking again. And fill in all the important details. You can even lower the brush size to get some of the smaller details that your brush was missing. But you don't want to go crazy and fill it in too much because then you won't have any sort of watercolor effect at all. Once you're happy with the details there, we can add the color by creating another new layer and also creating a clipping mask. I just used a shortcut there, but you can also go to layer, create clipping mask and set the blending mode of this layer to screen. Now grab your gradient tool, head over to this small little drop down arrow and select spectrums. Here you want, you want to select the first spectrum and just go ahead and apply it a few different ways until you find something that you like. So I think that looks good right there and I'm just going to leave it at that. Now we're going to add the watercolor splashes in the background. So create a new layer, grab your brush tool, and make sure your color is set to black. Now you can take your brush and enlarge it up to a amount that will fill up the rest of the background space, like 300 for me, and just click around randomly. Make sure you, you click more than once so that you have an overlapping of colors and you can even lower the brush size and add some details around the photo. I'm being pretty quick here for the sake of the tutorial but keep an eye on the composition and the balance of your photos. Now you can take that same gradient that you made earlier, right click and duplicate it, put it on top of this new splash layer and create a clipping mask. So there is the final effect and hopefully this tutorial gave you a little bit of creative inspiration so that you can use some of these techniques in combination with others to create a pretty cool photo or manipulation or even wallpaper. So leave me a comment on any thoughts or questions you had about this tutorial or anything you'd like to see in the future. Also I'm using a different mic to record so hopefully let me know if you notice any improvement in the quality or if the audio sounds a bit more clear. Thanks for watching. Justice Good here, and I'll see you next time.